I don't suppose you could give me a sample of your brain tissue for study purposes. Welcome students. Today we're going to talk about the Wings of Liberty campaign, but not about specific missions. Instead we'll talk about unit selection, mercenary choices, what you might want to do in terms of research and upgrade paths, and we'll talk about some of the achievements that are not mission specific, more general to the storyline whether you should pursue them and what some tips for succeeding at those achievements might be. Usually in StarCraft, your unit selection depends on what production buildings you have. Of course, in the campaign, you get usually one unit, sometimes two per mission, a new one, and, and you might think, well, I have to use that unit. Not really. What units you have depend on the order you go through the missions. If instead of getting to the great train robbery and using the default unit you get during that mission, the Diamondback, you would rather use siege tanks. You could, for instance, go through the Marsar mission, then smash and grab, then the dig, then you'd have siege tanks, and then you could use that in the great train robbery. If you wanted to use Reapers instead of Hellions in the outbreak, then before getting to that mission, you should find occasion to play the Devil's Playground first. But be sure you've paid attention to the web page on um, the order you can go through campaigns because that's helpful. The other unit selection involves the third covert mission where you can pick specters or ghosts and then that's all you have for the rest of the mission, um, one or the other. It doesn't much matter whether you pick. If you like the psionic lash ability, get the newfangled specter. If you like to snipe or in all in against air, you want to put ghosts in bunkers with an ocular upgrade because that's your tactic, then you'd want to get ghosts instead. It's just up to you. Now as far as mercenaries are concerned, you earn credits as you go along. You start with war pigs and those are occasionally handy to have. If you have some money saved up and something happens in your base, you can bring those down quickly and they're versatile. Devil dogs are fire bats. If you use fire bats, if that's something you like, get them. Same with hammer securities, which are marauders. If you use marauders as part of your tactics, you may want to have those available as mercenaries. Spartan Company or Goliaths. Uh, some people use Goliaths. If you do, get them as mercenaries so they're available, but if you don't use Goliaths, then don't spend money on it. Siege Breakers you should definitely get. Siege Breakers are a very good value. They're a very powerful unit um, that would be handy to have those available to you. The Hell's Angels are a Viking and those are not bad also. You might want to consider getting Hell's Angels. Flying Norwegian Bikers from Hell. Duskwings a little more questionable. They're uh, Mercenary Banshees. You can get those if you're into band sheets quite a bit. And then the interesting one, Jackson's Revenge, is a battle cruiser. Um, you, most people don't get that till the end of the game, so it's of limited usefulness, although you can do a mission path to get it earlier on. But you can only get one of these per mission. Some of the rest of them, the war pigs, you can keep getting after a cooldown between selections. Now I should clarify that. The War Pig Marines you can get three different times. Most of the other units you can get, and then after a cooldown you can get one more time. You can't get unlimited mercenaries. Now as you go through the mission and you complete supplemental objectives, the bonus objectives, you get points that can be used either for Zerg research or Protoss research. They're just designated one or the other. And as you get five points, you can make a selection, five more or another, and either Zerg or Protoss depending on the points. Your first choice is either the Shrike Cannon or Fortified Bunker. I'd lean toward Fortified Bunker myself. Get 10 more points, you can choose Planetary Fortress or Perdition Turret. Planetary Fortress is good if you have a specific plan for that, perhaps to wall in and all in. Otherwise, Perdition Turret is pretty good. The Predator or Hercules choice, Predator is worthless. The Hercules is a large transport that um, if it's destroyed, drops its units, you don't lose them. I get Hercules. Cellular reactor is handy because it gives your specialists the ability to be more effective right off the bat, and specialist units are pretty cool. You can also use, and I didn't click it here, should have the regenerative um, steel ability, but that regenerates your building strength pretty slowly. Hive mind emulator, that's a toughie. It doesn't happen automatically. It's micro intensive. You've got to command it to capture specific Zerg units and make them yours. Some people like it in all in because it allows a strategy of building your own air force by capturing the zerg. Side disruptor, that just works all the time, slows down all the attacking zerg and that's handy. Now over to the Protoss research side. Ultra capacitors or vanadium plating or just making a choice between whether you want to give your offense a little bit of a boost or your defense. Orbital depots or microfiltering. 
If you frequently get supply block, get orbital depots, but microfiltering's handy. Automated refinery or command center reactor, I would go with automated refinery. Those refineries work automatically without needing SCVs. You don't even need to um, put a command center in expansion for them to work. Just put them there. Ravens or science vessels. Science vessels repair, which is handy. Ravens have some point defense things and cannons, which may auto turrets, which may be helpful. Here's the best of all. Tech reactor's wonderful. It combines both a tech lab and a reactor, so you can make a lot of anything fast. Orbital strike you can consider if you want to be able to drop units here and there around the map. If you get all your research and you're still earning points, you can convert those for cash by going to the lab and then you'll have armory money. And speaking of armory money here, you can buy as much as you have money for. It's not a choice between this or that. In the base upgrades, I like both bunker upgrades. The projectile, the projectile accelerator gives you some range, whereas the Neo Steel bunker gives you two additional slots so you can put more units in your bunker. The missile turret has a couple of options. You can get both of them. Um, one gives it more life and one gives it um, more effectiveness at blasting things. The SCV upgrades, I'm a little less convinced about the first thing. You can use multiple SCVs to build a structure and that speeds it up. I myself don't use it. But the next one is pretty handy in that um, your SCVs repair more quickly. And you can never get too much of that. A related uh, repair issue though comes along with Terran buildings. There are the flying fire extinguishers here when your building's knocked about halfway down. Little fire extinguishers will float around it, spraying it, and that's handy also since if you're attacked while you're gone, your buildings are more likely to stay alive. And of course, orbital command's a no-brainer. Um, everybody gets orbital command. It's useful for a variety of reasons. You can upgrade your infantry. Um, the stim packs upgrade is also a no-brainer. Marines use stim packs. Better do that. Stim packs, of course, do some damage to your Marines. The way you can counter with that is by using the combat shield, which gives them back that much. And so you essentially, by having combat shield and stim, kind of neutralize the effect of stim on your Marines. Medic upgrades. Um, you can get medics out without using the tech lab. Since I'm going to be going for that tech reactor upgrade later, I just wait for that. But stabilizer med packs are pretty handy since you can repair faster and repairing is very important. You're not repairing. You're healing. Healing your units. On the fire bats, if you use fire bats, and that's an important part of your strategy, then I'd go ahead and get these upgrades. There's one that gives the flamethrowers a wider area of attack, and there's another that improves the armor of the fire bat. Same basic deal with the Marauder upgrades. If you're going to use Marauders frequently and they're an important part of your strategy, then you might as well get these upgrades. The first is Concussive Shells. I love Concussive Shells. They slow things down. In multiplayer, I go to Concussive Shell upgrades immediately. Kinetic Foam just gives them longer life. Now, Reapers, which would be really nice if they had a little um, more oomph to them, have two upgrades. One gives them more range and some more damage. The other is this cluster bomb. I like the first more than the second. The second is the sort of deal where they have to sit for a while before they go off. I like immediate attack. Here you go. Hellion, you have a couple options. Double width of their flame attack. Also, the second option is to have that attack do more damage. If you're going to use Hellions a lot, get these. If not, ignore them. Same principle with the Vulture. You can either bolster up the strength of your mines. Or the second upgrade is the replenishable magazine. If you're going to use vultures, I get the replenishable magazine. Pay some money, get more mines. Skipped over that there. Goliath. It's handy to be able to hit both ground and air targets simultaneously if you like Goliath. So if you like Goliath, get that. And the other upgrade, which gives them more range. If Goliaths aren't an important part of your strategies, just skip over that and use your money on something else. Diamondbacks have similar upgrades, an increase in range. And this is a little bit expensive. Or a shaped hull so that they um, can take more damage before they are toast, and that's even more expensive. Now here we get a couple things that are really useful. The Maelstrom rounds that the siege tank can fire do a lot more damage. Um, probably ought to use siege tanks, probably I'd get that. Shape blasts protect your own units. Uh, get a lot of area effect damage from tanks. You don't want to suffer yourself, and that can protect you some. If 
you can afford it, I get those too quick as you can. Starship upgrades. You know how medevacs take a while, boom, 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 to drop troops? This gets them out quickly. Um, if you're going to do a lot of drops, you might want to think about that. The advanced healing, probably more useful, but also much more expensive than most upgrades. The more healing, the better. Of course, you may be using your medics for healing. Now, get the wraith. Some people think wraiths are underpowered. The parcels upgrade gives them more energy up front so they can cloak longer. The next wraith upgrade um, protects them some when they're cloaked from things that can see them, makes it harder for those things to get them, like turrets, for instance, even if they can't see them. Vikings, you know, usually a multi-purpose tool sometimes isn't as effective as a single tool for the job, but Vikings, they seem pretty good. Ripwave missiles do a lot of damage. And the range, in, the range upgrades, you know, probably can't beat that. Banshee upgrades, you can get an upgrade to allow yourself to be cloaked twice as long. Of course, you want to be careful not to over rely on cloak. You have to turn it off from time to time. Attack things that can hit you, and once you've cleared those out, turn off your cloak for ground units that can't hit you, for example. Um, you can also upgrade to attack groups, especially if they're in a line. This works kind of like how um, aliens can blast a lot of probes or something if they're all in a line. Now we get the battle cruiser again. You usually get a battle cruiser late in your mission. These are very expensive upgrades, and you may not have much use for a battle cruiser, so you may never get to these. Um, either enhanced weapons or a super duper shield you can put around that is sort of like the shield that Tosh gets. Um, protect you. There are a couple interesting ones here in the Dominion. The Sonic Lash gives your um, Spectre 200 damage. That's a lot of damage. And so you might want to get that if you're going to use Spectres, I would think. And this is really cool. Just permanent cloaking. Be advised that it doesn't turn on automatically. You can't just rally your Spectres somewhere and assume they'll be cloaked and traipse across the map, you know, safe. You've got to cloak them first. Barrage Cannon. Thor already has a Siege Cannon. This is just a more powerful one that you can use to hit an entire area. And then the other thing's interesting. If your Thor is destroyed with the Immortality uh, Protocol upgrade, which is really expensive, it essentially becomes sort of like a building, and then if it doesn't get pounded to dust, um, and you have this, you can spend some money to rebuild your Thor. You still have to spend some money, just as not as much as the cost of a new Thor, and then your Thor goes back to fighting. May be useful. I don't know about it, though. All right, on to achievements. One way to get some achievements that involve the story mode of the game is in between missions, when you're on the bridge, in the cantina, or so forth, click on people, click on objects, click on um, even things that don't have outlines and aren't uh, obviously something that would give you some information or a little spiel or some such thing, and see what you learn. Some of those things will get you achievements, and you'll still, um, in any event, learn more about the lore of the game. There are achievements for getting all of uh, one kind of armory upgrade, for instance, and some people are thinking, hold it, I don't have the money for that. Well, one way to game that is don't get anything until you have a large pot of money, then save, then buy all of one kind. Then go back to your save, you have your money back, buy all the other kind, then go back to your save, buy all of the other thing, you get that achievement, then you're set. One achievement that does sometimes confuse people is the hurry up, it's raid night achievement. You need to complete um, Wings of Liberty on normal, and when we say on normal, we mean normal or higher difficulty, in eight hours. People go, how do you complete 26 missions in eight hours, especially if you do the alternate missions and the secret mission? Well, you don't. You complete Wings of Liberty. Completing Wings of Liberty doesn't mean doing all the missions. It means getting to all in, the final mission. And if you pay attention to this web page, you'll notice that you can get to all in without doing all the missions. Once you finish all in, you finished Wings of Liberty. So pick missions to get there if you're trying to get that achievement that will not take very long to get through, that don't have a set amount of time you have to grind through. 
Achievements can take a lot of time. Achievements can have you running back through the game over and over and, and just suck time out of your life. So if you find yourself getting bogged down in achievements, maybe go back to the video on um, whether you should be playing StarCraft at all and think about it. This is not Warcraft in space.